Look at this cartoon. This cartoon was published in the New York Times in 2014. Back in 2014, a cartoon showing a farmer and a cow knocking at the door of a room marked Eddie's Space Club, where two men could be seen reading a newspaper on India's Mars mission, was published by the American news publication The New York Times. The cartoon, which was made by Singapore-based artist Heng Kim Song, was carried with an article titled India's Budget Mission to Mars. The article talked about the total cost of India's Mangalyaan mission, which put a robotic probe around the orbit of Mars in September 2014. It was India's first interplanetary mission and ISRO became the fourth space agency after Roscosmos, NASA and the European Space Agency to achieve the feat. The total cost of the mission was put at $74 million, which made it one of the cheapest interplanetary space missions ever. But why is this cartoon surfacing now? As India created history by successfully landing a spacecraft on the moon's south pole, becoming the first country to do so and the fourth to land on the moon. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. Netizens were reminded of this cartoon published in the New York Times that mocked India. Riding a billion chairs and cruising through a tricky descent of about 19 minutes, the lander module of Chandrayaan-3 kept its date with the moon on 23rd August 2023. Chanda Mama is very far away. Now, one day she will come. When will they do it? Chanda Mama, Bas, Ek Tour Ke Hai. The cartoon indeed didn't go down well with Indians who deemed it offensive and racist, which forced NYT to apologize. The successful landing of Israel's Chandrayaan 3 mission has revived memories of that cartoon. Let's rewind a bit to 4th July 2023. NYT published another article on India's space program. But this time, the story was different. The article was titled, The Surprising Striver of the World's Space Business. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Plus 5 seconds. When India achieved independence in 1947, our country was going through a lot of problems. Back then, thinking about a space program was a luxury and a far-fetched dream. It was 1962. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who was independent India's first Prime Minister, who recognized the need for investment in space research and set up the Indian National Committee for Space Research, aka INCOSPAR, which is now known as the Indian Space Research Organization or the ISRO. But how did a young nation like India manage to set up its space mission as early as 1962 while facing difficulties in managing the basic needs of a large population? This is the story of how a few young driven men launched India's first rocket, paving the way for the future of satellites and space research missions in the country. It all started in 1940 when Vikram Sarabhai, a young student from a wealthy and influential family in Ahmedabad, came to the Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore campus after completing an undergraduate degree in physics and maths from Cambridge University. Sarabhai's education at Cambridge was interrupted as World War II started. Unable to return to Cambridge, Sarabhai asked the university if he could continue working towards his PhD back home in India. The university granted him permission on the condition that his work be supervised by the Nobel Prize winning physicist C.V. Raman. Two years later, in 1942, Sarabhai met Homi Jahangir Bhabha, who had been made a professor at the newly established Cosmic Ray Research Unit. In 1945, after World War II ended, Sarabhai returned to Cambridge to submit his PhD thesis. In 1947, he travelled back to India and set up the Physical Research Laboratory in Ahmedabad. At the same time, Sarabhai began to speak to his colleagues about beginning a space program. 
When India gained independence in 1947, Homi Bhabha wrote to then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to set up a separate branch of science for atomic energy. Shortly after, the Atomic Energy Commission came into existence in 1948. Bhabha was in charge of the commission. With a committee set up for space research, Sarabhai now needed dedicated young recruits. One of the young men drafted into the committee was APJ Abdul Kalam, who went on to become the president of India. At Incos Park, Kalam was a part of the team that oversaw the first rocket launch. The scientists had to slog under the sun due to a lack of resources. There was no accommodation nearby, so they had to move from far off places to the test site either on foot or cycle. Kalam, who did not know how to cycle, used to hitch a ride with one of the scientists carrying rocket parts in his pockets or bags. There were no big vehicles to take the rocket to the launch site, so bullock carts were used to carry the rocket. Later, bicycles were used. On 21st November 1963, a Nike Apache class sounding rocket was launched from Thumba near Thiruvananthapuram. There were significant contributions from outside India. The US provided the two rockets. France provided the sodium vapor payload and the Soviets gave MI4 helicopter for range clearance. The Thumba launch marked the beginning of the Indian space program. On 19th April 1975, the Aryabhatta satellite was launched into space by the Soviet Union using a Cosmos 3M launch vehicle from the Kapustin Yar, marking India's entry into the realm of space exploration. The successful launch of Aryabhat laid the foundation for India's subsequent space missions, including the development of indigenous launch vehicles and the Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan missions to the Moon and Mars, respectively. जल्द ही सूर्य के विस्तृत अध्ययन के लिए इसरो आदित्य एल वन मिशन लॉन्च करने जा रहा है द काउंट डाउन फॉर द लॉन्च ऑफ इंडियाज मेड इन सोलर मिशन आदित्य एल वन हैज कमेंस्ड जस्ट गेटिंग रेडी फॉर द लॉन्च कंप्लीटेड द रिहर्सल फॉर द लॉन्च टूमोरो वी हैव टू स्टार्ट द काउंट डाउन The spacecraft would be launched by PSLV C57 rocket. The Aditya L1 mission aims to study the sun from an orbit around the L1. It will carry seven payloads to observe the photosphere, chromosphere, and the outermost layers of the sun, the corona in different wave bands. Aditya L1 is a fully indigenous effort with the participation of national institutions. It can provide observations on the corona and on the solar chromosphere using the UV payload and on the flares using the X-ray payloads. The particle detectors and the magnetometer payload can provide information on charged particles and the magnetic field reaching the halo orbit around L1. For the ISRO, this success would be another major feat after India became the first country to land a spacecraft close to the lunar south pole in August. If all goes according to plan, Aditya L1 will enter into a halo orbit around one of five Lagrange points. From there, Aditya L1 should enjoy an uninterrupted view of the sun and study in real time its effect on environmental conditions in the vicinity of Earth and other planets. This will make India one of a small group of countries which are studying the sun.